the Hunger Games. Da 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 da. Let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to a new episode on this channel. And today we will be talking about the Hunger Games by Susan Collin. Now it's been a while since I've done a sci-fi book report, so I'm now going to do a Hunger Games with a bit of a fan-made map from what I've seen on the internet. So just I'm not yeah, I just took this from variety sources. So I just so I created my map of the Hunger Games. And well, let's just see how it goes out. I watched the movie, I've also watched I've read the books and everything. So this is going to be as pleasant as I think it will be. So let's start from the beginning. What is the Hunger Games? So from the Hunger Games, let's get started on the basics. For one thing, there is a great deal of violence, and one of these violences is basically everything from. Well, if you know if you know Roman history, then you'll know about what the gladiators did with their coliseums and basically almost everything. And another thing about the Hunger Games is that it's so Roman-like that it's basically a future Rome. Except it's with America instead of Rome and Europe. For one thing, the Hunger Games was practically awesomer than I was. That practically awesomer than I thought it would be. And right now, this Hunger Games video, that, that will do a bit of a brief thing on the on the book itself is just a bit of a preview that I'm not even willing to show sure that it's going to be accurate. And if it is like some parts exactly the same like other videos, it is highly intentional. If I actually had the only videos that went for what the Hunger Games is the movie. But let's just get started. So the Hunger Games are set in Panem, a place where it used to be what we call North America right now. In the there is a shining capital, and around it, there are 12 districts. There used to be 13, one got destroyed, which is the reason why District 12, where this book is set in, well, where it starts to be set in, is extremely small. Because of revolution, and the unable, inability to do the revolution. It features... A 16-year-old Katniss Everdeen who takes her, who volunteers to be in place of her sister Prim Everdeen in the annual Hunger Games when Prim's name was chosen in the Hunger Games spot. And right now, the Hunger Games is another way to learn how we can avoid future. And if this future is even grim, then it would be a bit grimmer. Anyways, back to the summary. Katniss says that this is a death sentence, as well. No, everyone had a very, very low percent chance of winning, and if they did, they, that's the reason why they were given fame and glory for a district. And the Hunger Games have begun. Seriously, they have begun. Uh, and for that. I'm just going to say I'm truly sorry for everything that has happened. Because in one thing, Katniss Everdeen, second instinct, is survival. And she hasn't been close to death before. And for that, she has a second instinct on survival. Once on your feet, survival is necessary. You have to learn every survival trick you have if you are chosen to go into the Hunger Games. And maybe, maybe, a little, even a tinty bit of advice might help you survive the Hunger Games. Another thing about the Hunger Games that I found out is about how each district has its own industry. I mean, District 13, it turns out, was actually granted, but I'm not going to write in there because District 13 is destroyed. While everyone else, for example, District 12 is, has a coal, or like District E, electronics. Or like District Nine, District Nine electricity, and District Five power and electricity, and so on. District Eleven has agriculture, but no one is pretty much allowed to use them, except I guess the power that the capital sends to everyone so that they can work. And no one is allowed to eat the agricultural food. At least District Eleven isn't allowed to. 
I mean, they have to create their own textiles to wear, not the jobs that they, not the ones they make their jobs. All, everything that these districts make go to the capital, and the only way they can get, get something of their own is to make it in their own time. I mean, unless you're like, like I, mean, I mean, if you have a job and basically, you have a job and basically the job is government related, government related, then you will have to use that job for yourself, like a paycheck to trade for bread, or if you are a baker, like in District 12, then you can make your own bread and sell it off, but you can only eat the stale bread, even though you will have a good diet, you will only be able to be allowed to eat the stale bread that no one really wants. Panem is a very dystopian version of the future, and I'm not going to argue there, but there is one thing that Panem has just set the chills on me. That it is possible, and we have almost become Panem itself. I mean, not within the districts, but one person getting grabbing all the industries for just themselves. Just themselves and then having to make their own supplies or buy their supplies for everyone else who makes those supplies in their own free time that's to survive because the capital won't donate anything the hunger games in a way in real life have already begun and that is one of the most terrifying things i have found out in my life after like studying it a bit in my own life time but as much as i don't like having to live in a hunger games world i pretty much just like the fact that we probably will so stop laughing at everyone else because they're just different think about what might happen to you if there was just one superpower well single this is a metaphor and a way to learn how you are. And that's the cue for ending this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did enjoy this episode, please like, share, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And if you want me to talk more about the Hunger Games, because I will talk about Captain Fire, then please tell me in the next episode. Turn out. Peace.